So I woke up this morning thinking we need another AI coding assistant and Charm has answered my prayers by releasing Crush. Remember your first Crush? This is your new coding bestie, they say, and it is full of glamour, just like they show in this screenshot that I have here. This thing is beautiful. The UI is great. The AI coding agent actually is not bad. I'll show you uh, just a quick look at the, the UI itself, some of the quirks that I found about it, some of the things that I actually really like about it. I do want to touch on one thing. I could not get Sonnet 4 to run through Open Router. It would run like one or two messages and then it would hit an API error. I'm calling that out that I did have to not use Open Router for my testing here. Here's an example where I was actually testing it with a different model. So this is Quinn 3 Coder and it worked fine. Like it was actually great. So it was able to complete, I made this face filter app that um, it just didn't have the images for it, but it actually was very functional. Now, let me load it up for you here. I have one already running in this one, just to kind of show you some of the flow of this. So when you're here and you've got a job running, you can hit control D to open up your kind of like info. This is a web OS desktop design project. You can see the files that have been changed and everything. You can close it out. If I hit escape here, uh, or control C rather, I get a nice little modal. I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes, so I'm out of there now. Because what I wanna show you is there's really two modes to actually start this. There's the YOLO mode, which you can see here, crush-YOLO. Let me actually move my face around a little bit. Right. So you can do crush-YOLO, or you can do cr just regular crush. So if we do just regular crush here, what, we can, what we'll do is we'll be asked for a lot of permissions for everything. The permission thing is probably the most annoying because if I go and say, hey, create in a, in a folder called e-commerce, create me a simple e-commerce store that sells puppies. All right, we're gonna go ahead and kick that off. I'm gonna move my, my camera down a little bit here. What I wanna show you here is that it's going to ask me a bunch of times to do things. It's probably gonna make me, like ask me to make a directory. It's also gonna ask me to uh, edit or write a file. So here we go. This is what it looks like, permission required. Now, if you run it in YOLO, you don't get asked any of this. It's like that dangerously skip permissions with cloud code, but this is tool right. If I say allow for session, so I'm gonna make sure, so allow for session, and I'm gonna hit enter here. My thinking behind that was, yeah, just write anything you want here. You're good to go. And I would actually work it this way. I think there's something odd going on where Maybe it's writing to that particular file is what I've approved, but not the writing tool in general. Again, all of this is configurable. They have in their documentation, you can go through, set up uh, some config file to find the tools that you actually want to actually allow. But see here, I'm actually having to approve this again. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow for session. And it can be kind of annoying, especially when I was running evals on it. So that's one of my big pieces of feedback. So a few other things that I just do want to show you. Let me jump over to another one. So I'm just going to say allow for session on this one. Look on the right side here. And again, I'm going to move my camera. It actually gives me a really cool like summary of everything that's happened here. The, the game that was created, the cost of it and everything. I actually really like that. I like this little summary that it has on the right side. It's almost like its own little column over there. So they do an awesome job, honestly, with the UI in this thing. A uh, few other, I'd say, idiosyncrasies. I'm used to putting at to add my files. It's actually forward slash. Not a big deal because the UI here is snappy. It's very fast. Like, it finds stuff. I start typing anything in. It's really quick, unlike some of the other ones where it can actually take some time. Very, very fast. You can actually see the different commands by hitting Control P. You can create a new session, switch your sessions. If you want, you can kind of see all, a lot of the stuff that I've already ran. And then I can summarize it. I can enable thinking, I can enable thinking mode. I can open file picker, uh, initialize a project, which is kind of like the clog code and net command. And then switching models or model selector is great because look, I can actually even search down. Like this is such a nice feature. Uh, I know this is such a little thing, but uh, Quinn 3 Coder, if I were to run that, I could easily switch to that. 
The other thing that I love, so notice that I am, I, where my cursor is, is on the ready. If I hit tab, notice the green bar that is, that is appeared by all this text. I can actually scroll up at, like to actually look at what that message is. It's really, really, really well done. Very thought, thought out. But like I said, this is brand new. It does have some quirks in particular this allowing this permission thing is kind of annoying. Um, I also have cases where it just gets stuck and I actually have to kill it. And so it'll just say working, working, working or writing or whatever. And I just have to I'll kill it. The other thing I kind of like is it's really interesting the way it's got like that kind of like random sort of character and number. It's almost like cryptic kind of feel to it. It's pretty, pretty sweet. So see here, this one finished, but I actually didn't get that side panel. So I'm just going to, out of curiosity, if I end up like minimizing this a little bit, do I get the side panel? I do. Okay. So it's responsive. So that's pretty cool too. So yeah, it basically, uh, that <laughs> it's basically like mobile responsive. It'll actually do the control D where you can bring down it or it'll have it on the side if it's small enough. Just really, really sweet. All right. The next thing I want to do is I just want to talk a little bit about evals. I won't take too much time with this because I, I'm in the midst of running so many of them now. My spreadsheet has gotten ridiculous. So yes, I was joking at the beginning. I feel like we have way too many AI coding assistants. I'm probably going to have to start dropping some just due to the amount of time it actually takes. But I ran Crush Through with Sonnet 4 and it scored 24,054 points. That same, those same tests with Rue code are 26,014. Now in my last video, I talked about the baseline being like 19,000 something. I've actually decided to add another test to it. I'm just like so in the zone right now working on evals that I've got one that I finally got finalized that I feel really good about. So I've added another test in there. Uh, it, does, it does extend the amount of runtime that I have to do, but at the same time, I do think it's valuable just to be able to get more test cases in there. And root code with Gemini 2.5, it's 19,516. So in general, though, I would say this is a solid showing for what I would call maybe the best looking CLI coding tool on the market. Like it's pretty incredible. It doesn't take up much memory. The memory footprint's slow. It works on Windows, Mac, Linux, all of these things. It's really good. I'm staying away from the controversy of things on purpose because I do not know the backstory between charm and what happened with open code. But I will just say, looking at this product, using this product, it's pretty solid. I'm actually got high hopes for this. It is very new though. It's missing a lot of the things that we're coming to actually appreciate. For example, queuing up messages. It doesn't have the ability to create custom slash commands, but they have come out the gate with a lot. So you can take a look at some of the configuration that's available. LSPs, MCPs, you can whitelist tools. This is that configuration I was talking about. Probably worth taking some time to do this, especially because it's very annoying to actually use this and the allow for session not working. They, they do need to actually um, fix that in my opinion. The YOLO flag is great. I love that they called it YOLO. There's just a lot of style and flavor to it. They basically make it where you can bring in custom providers, which is also super good. I love that they actually have logs because that will allow us to actually kind of figure out issues and things a lot quicker. So yeah, that's a quick look at Crush. I probably would use this all day tomorrow, but that permission thing drives me nuts. I don't think I would actually have a lot of fun until I figure out something around that. I may actually play around with setting up a configuration. I really like the allow for session because there are some times I want to create a new session and I want to be able to just see the direction it's going and then let it run. But there are other times I actually want to approve each one. So I'm not a big fan of just configuring it blanketly for my project. I use this a lot in Claw Code, to be honest with you. The, uh, you know, approve for session or create a plan and uh, accept all edits is like a very important feature to me. But in general, I think this is solid. It's super smooth. It's very... I guess apparently mobile responsive, as you can kind of tell by the way I kind of zoomed in here. And then that opens up this like top tab thing that overlays things. It's 
unbelievable to me what you can do. So very impressed with what they've been able to do from a rendering capability, technology. But at the same time, you know, at the end of the day, what matters to me is the functionality of the Agenta Coder. And it's pretty solid, especially with Quinn 3 Coder and Sonnet 4, the two I've had a chance to test. I may not actually be able to run all evals on this in time because I just have so many more to run, but I'll give it my best shot as we go forward so we can kind of track how it improves. Also, I do need to go through and test out some Horizon Alpha, which just dropped on Open Router. So yes, I've been talking to that just through the Open Router chat to try to get some information on it. Anyway, if you've had a chance to try out Crush yet, let me know in the comments below. I'm impressed, to be honest with you. I've never seen such a beautiful UI experience. And now it just comes down to how well they, can they actually add on the additional features that we require and get keep the agentic coding assistant itself actually really good. All right, everyone. I appreciate you all so much. Till next time, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Peace out.